Yeah, my name is Dan Cooper. Um, I work at Adler University, which is formerly a uh, school of professional psychology. It's a graduate school for psychologists, but my background is actually in urban planning and community development. Um, and I found myself at Adler because they had started these two institutes for social change a few years back and staffed them with non-psychologists. So I found myself working on uh, justice-related issues uh, at the Institute on Public Safety and Social Justice, which was newly created to kind of flip the script on uh, public safety to be more about community development, human development, and less about suppression um, and control. Um, so, so very early on, uh, Ryan and I had, had done some work, had, had given some presentations at uh, you know conferences like Urban Affairs Association, where we had gotten a hold of some data at the uh, zip code level, and um, we had kind of just looked at how much we're spending on incarceration and. Not surprisingly, it's a lot, right? Um, but this shows you how much we needed somebody like DataMate, right? So our maps are, are pretty crude. You know, we've got our million dollar block. This is Austin, you know, when we had finally gotten a hold of some data that the Chicago Justice Project released, uh, which was block level um, over the five year period we have data for 2005 to 2009. We could do this kind of descriptive analysis, just really illustrating the point that, oh my God, look how much we're spending, $17 million that we're committing to spend over the life of these sentences in just one block in Austin, for example. So, so the way Ryan and I saw it, and you know, in conversations with Forrest and Derek and Kathy, um, you know, we really honed in on this message that perhaps there's a real danger in just focusing on the common sense low-hanging fruit that we can all agree on, right? And so, not to take anything away from the president's message, but still we're largely talking about you know, low-level drug users, for, for example, right? So everybody's still afraid to say, uh, we only mean, you know, the people who committed very small crimes. Like, everybody else we can still incarcerate. Um, the problem with that is that the evidence base for incarceration is a successful form of rehabilitation um, is, is pretty poor, right? In Illinois alone, the, the recidivism rate over three years is somewhere around 50%, right? Meaning just about half the folks who go in are going to go back at another point. Um, and, and the reforms we're largely looking at, you know, we, we hold everything to a higher standard. We will only divert folks into mental health or drug substance abuse or something else if there's an evidence base for it, right? If it's been proven to be successful in a randomized control trial. Yet we don't hold incarceration to that same standard, right? Um, and so the bar is set pretty low and yet we're holding, you know, prison reform programs and initiatives to a really high standard. And we think that's, um, there's a real danger there, right? So. Um, we didn't invent this, right? So uh, Angela Caputo wrote a story about this in the Chicago Reporter a few years back. Um, so the point wasn't to, you know, carve this out and say this is, hey, this is a new thing. But um, we think this is a really powerful tool because folks can really look at their neighborhood and zoom into their block and say, wow, on my block alone, we're, we're locking up um, X amount of people for low-level drug offenses or other offenses, and that costs us a million dollars over the life of these sentences, right? Um, so, so getting to those numbers a little bit, because um, I know there are folks who work on justice system reform here, um, we think we have pretty solid estimate. We use the average cost, which um, roughly if you divide you know, the total amount of correction spends by the number of prisoners, you get somewhere around twenty to $22,000 a year for average cost locking folks up. Um, when they're sentenced to Department of Corrections, there's a minimum and a maximum sentence, so we took the minimum sentence and assumed they're only going to assume, uh, serve the minimum sentence. So this is actually pretty conservative because there are so many other costs factored into incarceration. There's the policing, there's parole, there's uh, judges, et cetera, um, the judicial system, and that's not included in these calculations. So just to wrap up, and I'll let Kathy um, take you through the website, um, is what we want to get out of this is really pushing for deeper, more progressive reform. Uh,